cigar box. So, what's up, guys? Joel, uh, Wally, how you guys doing? Can you guys hear me? Give me a one if you can hear my vocals. Mm -hmm. but, uh, oh, yeah. So, I kind of wanted to, um, I don't know, I was just bored. wanted to play some guitar, um, talk about songs. It's my new cigar box guitar. It's really fun. I don't know. There was this band I used to listen to in the 90s called Presidents of the United States of America. They did um, Lump and um, did a lot of songs, Peaches. Um, but the, the lead singer, the lead singer, the guitar player, he played a lot of times like a Gibson, like SG, um, but it was only three strings. He put three uh, bass strings on there. And... Uh, so it's kind of cool to just play like a, a three string guitar, you know, kind of a, kind of let you not hit, I don't know, it's kind of different to play. But right now I got to tune the same way, open G. That riff right there I kind of stole from John 5. Um, if you like, if you Google John 5 or go on YouTube on John 5, he plays this riff all the time. He plays in drop D, but that's basically what he's doing is going between the top D and like the middle D. It's just going down. I'm also playing with my my new whammy pedal. 
right now I have it set to octave down. Boom. It's pretty cool. You can do some fun, some fun riffs with it. This um, this whammy pedal is uh, the Digitech whammy. Um, I think it's like the second generation. It's pretty cool. It's got this is the box right here actually. What's, what's cool about that pedal is um, it's not only just you can do dive bombs, obviously you can do one octave down, two octaves down, or one octave up, two octaves up, but you also can harmonize. So you can do, um, you do a fourth up or fourth down, a third up, third down. You can like harmonize guitars is kind of cool. Um, so it's a lot of stuff you can do with that whammy pedal. Right now, this is a fourth. This is a fourth up. So if I play a G, that's just a regular G, and it just goes a fourth up. But you also can do in chord uh, mode, so you can have it at the same time. So now it's playing the G and the fourth, which is the C. So it's kind of playing like a, a die out of two notes. So it's kind of cool for leads and stuff. If you're like one guitar player, you can kind of harmonize yourself. Um, that's what I was kind of thinking for if I was doing one man gigs, like I sometimes do one man shows, I'm just playing like guitar and vocals and stuff. I just think I could harmonize myself. Um, but really cool. This is a third. And then you can do the octave thing, which is really cool. They have a really, they have a, a, like a new version Digitech made, um, Joel, like last year, I think it came out. It's got a lot more features. This came out, this, this one came out like five years ago. Um, but the new one, like every, the first one could only do like a couple different things. Like that's the one that Tom Morello had, like in Rage and stuff when they came out in like the late 80s. But then this is... This one has, you can add the chords and the harmonizing and stuff, and then the new one can even do more than that. It's like every model to do more stuff. But this is, this is kind of what's kind of cool. You can get that octave. That's like the octave mode. Whoa. So, messing with that stuff. And then, uh, one of the cool things about open tunings, um, like the open G or anything like that, is you can't really, you can slide and you can kind of do it. So you can 
kind of mess with the slide. Yeah, kill switch. Yeah, Tom Morello would do a kind of a cool, kind of would do the kill switch. You know, that kind of thing. What is that? You know, he would do that kind of thing, the rub, but he would do like the kill switch and stuff. I might, um, I have this uh, Alvarez. I put a kill switch in for for some like rage stuff and other stuff. It's kind of fun to do. I also have kill switch uh, pedals. All it does is shut off the signal real quick. Um, but kill switch is really cool. Buckethead is really good at using the kill switch. He has that kill switch in the top of his kind of Les Paul. Um, John Five is really good with the kill switch. He has on his like telly. Like I'll have like that middle button on his telly. Um, a lot of guys use that kill switch and you get kind of cool. You basically, you can, you make your own delay. That's kind of what a kill switch does is, is, uh, you know, instead of, it's kind of like you're having your own delay, you know, so, and you can kind of control it. So you can have this note go three times, this note go two times, this note go eight times, you know? So that's, what's kind of cool about a kill switch. You can't really do that with a delay pedal. It's just, it's set, you know, unless you have lots of different pedals, I guess. So, slide's really cool with that too. That's why I kind of like that. A lot of times I keep one guitar in like open E or open G just so I can mess around with slide anytime. It's kind of cool. What's up, Nelson? How's it going? Just playing with my Camacho from Honduras. That says it back here, too. I love the neck on this, too. Look at that neck. Like, I've seen some cigar box guitars online and pictures. It's literally like a piece of wood, and they'll, like, put, like, a Home Depot ruler on top no frets which is i mean it's cool um but this is like real rosewood and then like real nickel frets even put these little tacks on there the fret markers rosewood on the back you hear these tuners are really cool but he still kind of kept some of like you know because the whole idea with cigar box guitars it's it's like it's homemade you know so you want to make it look homemade you don't want to make it look like like Fender made it or something like that. But it's actually got a bolt, just like a, a regular bolt, a Phillips head bolt right there. And then it's a, they call it actually a, a zero nut, which means there's no nut. There's no nut in this guitar. It's a fret. So this bolt is like a string tree. And then this is actually the zero nut. It's just a fret. And then it actually has, if you count that 22, but it actually has 21 usable frets. So it's like a real kind of guitar. It's got the octave, like an old, I think the old original Fender Strats were 21 frets. Um, but there's there's no truss rod. Um, so I'm going to try not to leave this outside in the rain or something. But I, I, haven't, I haven't opened it up yet, but I think it might be, it doesn't really give off a lot of hum, so it might be a humbucker in there. It doesn't say any brand name or anything like that. And... I have no idea where he got this bridge because it looks like it's made in a factory. But, like, I didn't know they even sold three string bridges. Whoa, there's a spider that's dropped down right there. Like a daddy long legs. But it's like a three string bridge. And it looks like from a factory. And then these, you know, regular knobs. It might be rosewood here on the actual um, thing. So it's a very cool guitar. Um, AWH actually made the guitar. Um, they don't have a website, but they have a Facebook. You can go on there and can check out all their guitars. I put in that link of that video. Um, but they make really cool cigar box guitars, like custom like this. And Scar My Guitar, obviously, they make really cool stuff too. What's up, Francis? How's it going, man? 
the more you know. That's from uh, like the PSA, like um, public service announcements, right? Stuff. <laughs> I, I watched that um the new rock that new rock video Francis that you just did with um Sean that's cool I gotta mess around with that jam too um I, I don't know if you guys saw it but I put up today um I spent like way too much time on it but I took Sean's like funk challenge and I like cut like certain bass lines that I liked and his vocal samples and metalhead hippie samples. And then I played the organ part. I spent way, way too much time on it. I don't know how much time. Um, and, and then I, I was like, well, it's kind of like a rap song, hip hop song. Like I was going for like kind of sugar Hill gang rappers delight. That's why I called it hippies delight. And then I added, I was like, well, break dancing. So I, you know, got some, old school break dancing, like from the eighties. I was actually said it was from like LA. And then I got some new school, like uh, the modern kind of break dancing, which is kind of crazy. Like how much, how different it is like 30 years. Like they're doing like crazy stuff now, the break dancing. I don't know how they do that. So I don't know how they don't break their necks every single time. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for watching it. Um, yeah, it was, it's, I don't know. I get like, you guys probably have it too, but it's, um, time just flies. You're like editing videos or you're working on a song or something like that. And it's like two hours go by and you're like, Oh wow. Where'd that go? I'm just, and I would, I'm always trying different stuff. It's like, well, let me try that right there. Let me try that right there. Oh, that doesn't work. That, that looks dumb. And before you know it, hours go by it's ever since i don't know like i got my first task cam for well i first started doing off a of boom box like when i first started playing guitar and, and like when i was 12 and then i got a four track a task cam four track with a tape like a high uh, resolution tape that actually recorded really fast and then i started recording stuff on computers with like fruity loops I started recording stuff 2001, 2000, 2001, 2002 on Fruity Loops. Um, I was still doing four track stuff too. But um, yeah, just so much time spending on recording, trying different things. Because um, there's no right way. There's no right or wrong way to record anything and mix things. It's just, I just use my ear. That's what some of the most the best people out there they just use their ear and they kind of see what sounds good <laughs> yeah i've heard i've heard good things about reaper i've never messed around with reaper that much i've only seen um a couple people use it um but i feel like i feel like once you get used to a daw it's um it's better just to kind of stick with it unless it's holding you back, unless you feel like it's holding you back. Because I feel like, you know, you, it's a learning curve. So if I switch to Reaper, I'm, I'm, I'm really used to like, um, sometimes use Logic, but a lot of times you use GarageBand. I feel like once you get used to a software, it's better to stick with it um, because then you just get more fluid with it and it's faster and you just kind of know how things move and sound waves and you know all the different effects and stuff um so yeah just if you're comfortable with reaper keep using reaper um i feel like a lot of them are really similar you know everyone says you got to use pro tools you got to use logic you got to use whatever um, but they're all really similar i've i personally don't like pro tools um just because it doesn't it doesn't have a lot of the stuff built into it you have to bring everything into it um i like the ease of you know other stuff that has lots of instruments and samples and effects already in there and i don't have to like get all this other stuff to put into it you know but everyone's different yeah 
Yeah, um, Craig Craig Flowers used Reaper. Francis saying he used Reaper. You know, I'll, I'll check it out. But I feel like I can do a lot of stuff with. Um, if on a PC, I'll use uh, Logic, but a lot of times I use GarageBand. Um, Alba, Albaton. Yeah, um, was it Andy Dawson? I've watched a lot of his videos, and he actually shows Albaton. Albaton, I think how you say it, but it'll show all the um, the tracks. So it's it looks. I mean, it looks like a lot of a lot of different DAWs, you know. And so I think I would, you know, I have heard good things about that too. Cakewalk. I've used that one back in the '90s too. Um, but when I first, my first DAW was was Fruity Loops. I got the free demo, and then I bought it. And you know, what I think the biggest thing that came along way is um, drum sounds. The drums used to really suck up until not that long ago, just a few years ago. Um, but now the drums are a lot better. The samples. And also what you can do with it. Um, they have AI drummers. They have a lot of drum packs and like kits and stuff. Drums have come a really long way. Um, like guitar, bass can sound okay if you want a synth bass and stuff. But guitars, it's hard to do synth guitars like to make it sound like a real like humbucker guitar, like a Les Paul guitar or something like that. They just that's one instrument they can't really get. Um, but drums, addictive drums, I've used that is 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 amazing. Um, like drums have come so far. Before, like you rec you did a demo with crappy drums, and then you like you eventually got your dr in, into a studio or someone that really knew how to mic drums. Um, and it's so much matters on the room, the the drum mics, the kit, how you. The, the you know the the heads on there how you mic them the player um, you got if you watch Craig Flowers like and he'll tell you too he spends like when I ever like play real drums and stuff it's I'm always kind of upset about it because it never sounds like like the way you want it to sound it's so hard to get drums and the sound. Um, Yeah, I spend a lot of time on the drums. I use Addictive. Um, I use the drums in Logic or GarageBand. I use a lot of different types of drums because I, I don't know. I'm a not I'm not a very good drummer, but for rock music, for a lot of the music that I like, drums are my favorite part of it. You know, like so I I think drums are super important. Um, and like like I was saying, drums come so far that you really should take advantage of all the cool drum stuff out there. Um, the best obviously is, like I said, a real drummer that, and you can mic everything in a good room and all that stuff. If you can get that, that's the best. But, oh, MT, I've heard of that. Um, but addictive, that's just like on another level. It's like crazy. Um, you know, I don't, like, they have real drummers doing a million different things. That's how they do it. I want to. I want to kind of gig with this guitar. And it's super light. It probably weighs. Three pounds. Yeah, doesn't Appleton usually cost money? Or is it just a free demo? Moving to the country, you're gonna need me a lot of peaches. 
chips into the tree. Gonna eat me a lot of chips. Presidents of the United States of America. If you guys never checked them out, they're such a fun, cool band. Lump sat alone in a boggy marsh. Ian Luckett, my friend from the UK. How's it going, Ian? Try the talk box. Let's try it right now. DC Helicon synth talk box vocoder thingy. Um, I usually use only two of the different settings, but it has. This is a weird like a robot. Like a robot, it's a robot. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. 
I feel like you you got to be kind of weird to like it. That's why I like it because it's it's just a weird thing. My my two favorite pedals right now, I think I don't even have a lot of pedals, but I really like the Digitech Whammy. I've always known I wanted one and I like it. And then the Synth Talk Box. Then obviously like Wawa and Distortion and stuff, but um, I don't have, I don't feel like I need like a lot of distortion pedals or a lot of other stuff. I don't know. It's kind of like basic stuff. If it does, because I can't really hear the difference between a lot of different stuff. That's like really minute. So I was like, wow, mine is get real weird and get like, What's this one do? Wow, 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 yeah. Do, 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 wow, 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 That one actually did use for, um, I worked with uh, Digit Hollis and I did The Dead is Rising. I forget how it goes. Dead is rising. But that's kind of, that one's kind of cool. It's like the robot voice, but it, it automatically slides up. But there's like a word for that. Glissando, I think. I think that's like the classical term where it slides to the note. That's kind of cool. Ian Luck, it doesn't sleep. He goes on holiday, but he doesn't sleep. Guitar geeks. Yeah, that's me. That's all of us, actually. Well, music geeks. I think all of us are just not just like guitar geeks. We're like music geeks. Because it's the whole thing, you know? It's the, it's the melodies and the song and the drums and all that stuff. Guitar meets science. I'm surprised, like, I've told him so many times because he likes all the weird stuff. Yeah. Well, he has the electric kazoo. I feel like he definitely needs <clears throat> a vocoder, talk box kind of thing. Because he's, he likes the weird stuff, you know? get a riff in your head for some reason i got the mission possible my the mission impossible riff is in my head and i can't get it out maybe it's the tuning of this guitar <laughs> the slide will sound like. in the slide. It's kind of fun. Guitar box. 
cigar box. It's a box. The cigars are gone. That's kind of sad. They gave me a guitar box guitar, but there's no cigars in there. They should at least give me the cigars in there, too. You know, they smoked the cigars and just gave me the empty box. And that's my prize, an empty box. You know? And they put a guitar on, on the box. So if they didn't put a guitar in the box, I would have been just like, why would you just give me this empty box? I don't want an empty box. It's a consolation prize for no cigars. No cigars, but you get a guitar that's attached to the empty box. That's kind of funny. It's like a dad joke, kind of funny. Seven, eight, nine. nine numbers are Canada. Oh, yeah. That's a good joke, too. Stafford. I'm playing an empty box of cigars, Stafford. It's empty. They smoked them all, then they gave me this empty box. music studio show and show all the people about the cool that this is so rad look at the neck flame maple on an empty box rosewood i think it's i forget what size bolt that is no nut who needs nuts I don't need nut. I already got nuts. I don't need more nuts on my guitar. There's no nut in this guitar. <laughs> Studio, yeah. 
I can talk all day on my talk box. Yeah, 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 oh, yeah, oh, 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 I should. I want to go on Stafford Music Studio and just and talk the whole time on my talk box. Just ask. I'll just talk the whole time. Ask me questions. When did you first start playing guitar? What did you say? I started when I was twelve years old. Yeah. That'd probably be get annoying after a while, though. Night Mooney, Hurricane Moon. I only speak vocoder. Exactly. Vox. I love that Vox wah though. It's weird. You wouldn't think. I guess. I guess you would think. But like wah-wahs sound so different. Like I have a crybaby. Crybaby. Crybaby sounds different than other crybabies, depending on the model. A lot of Vox, and it's just the brand sounds different, and then the model sounds different. It's crazy. Like it, you wouldn't think it would make. Because it's just a filter sweep, it's just filtering, you know, the highs and lows there. You wouldn't think it would matter that much, but it matters a lot, the frequency. Even it's just off like a little bit, a couple hertz. Talking to me, Stafford? I teeth hitting the mic there. Um, I actually use, right now I'm using the, my Boss ME50. It's like a multi-effects pedal. Um, they have like ME30, 50, 70, I think. I'm using on that, but if usually for gigs and stuff, I use um, the Hendrix Crybaby. I like the Hendrix Crybaby because um, there's a little red button on the side. I can hit it with the side of my foot and it bump up, bumps up the gain, and then it has um, a little knob on the side too, so you can make it, I don't know. I think it, it widens the filter sweep. That's what I think it does. So I say it makes it more wah wah -y, but it actually opens, it makes the more, more filter sweep. So it's nice too, you can kick it in, and you, you can just leave it the high gain in there for leads, because a lot of times you're playing leads with a wah wah. Uh, that's why I like that Jimi Hendrix crybaby. Um, but right now I'm just using, I think it sounds pretty good, even on a regular guitar. <laughs> this is like a, it's just a boss cry baby. <laughs> R2, R3, locking nut. Chicago Shredder, he's in the house. Don't you gotta work early in the morning? I don't wanna keep you up, R2. System of a down in here. They kind of, a lot of people 
of people don't like them, even if they like rock music, or metal, they don't like System of Down. I guess the, the singer's kind of Serge Tankian. He's kind of got an interesting voice. And then the backup singer, uh, what's his name? He's kind of got an interesting, like a different type of voice. Um, so they're not for everybody, but I th the drummer is crazy. They write really cool songs. Um, I love them. I think they're awesome. They're so they're really good live too. Like um, one of the craziest mosh pits I've ever been in was System of a Down. Like, like they were doing, wake up, why don't you put on a little makeup? And everyone, that was like the first song they did and everyone just like, Pooh. and it was just like made a huge circle and it was just, it was crazy. Um, Poo Ninja likes SOD, yeah. I think I need an extra string. Stafford. Sleep well. <clears throat> Gonna play some metal. It's all jacked up on Mountain Dew. That reminds me of um, what's that uh, Will Ferrell movie? He's racing cars. Talligated Nights. Kids are all hocked up, hopped up on Mountain Dew and stuff. Reminds me of that stuff. <laughs> wanted to come on a little bit i don't even know i think it was gonna be more productive um but i just ended up just playing cigar box guitar and uh they're fun they're super fun i played like a cheap one that was just as fun this one's just fancier looking but the cheap ones um you can get them on you get the kits um for like 50 bucks Everything's included. Or you can get like use one at eBay's less less than a hundred bucks. And they're they're super fun. Keep rocking. I'ma keep jazzing. You're gonna let 
let the dogs out? Who let the dogs out? That song came out probably 20 years ago now. Digitech whammy engage, and that's a fourth. So when I'm playing that G, that's playing the G and the C at the same time. That's what's kind of cool about this pedal. Like, I would never think of that playing like that. definitely a song. Everything's a song. thing about new um, pedals effects for me is like does it inspire you to write a song or a riff that you probably wouldn't have written or tried if before um, like if you're just playing the same riffs with all the different effects and pedals and guitar then um, it doesn't really matter but Songs are literally everywhere. That's true. Um, case in point. I'm definitely going to write something with that. I just like that change right there.
at the moment what i'm blank at the moment oh yeah that's hard sometimes it's the hardest thing is to think of like what am i going to write a song about you know like you come up with a riff or a melody and you're like oh, what do i want to sing about sometimes that's the hardest sometimes it's the opposite sometimes it's like oh, i just want to write a song about this <laughs> So, so many times I write, I'm gonna, I'm planning to write a song about something, and then it just sidetracks and like, well, that doesn't fit that song at all. That song's way too happy for that. It's way too sad for that. Like the melt, like the song is that. good hanging out with you guys um been on about an hour already just wanted to um hang out show off my new little toy my new empty box of cigars um but i'll definitely see you guys around and um hippie did you like did you like that song i did a tribute to to you i hope you liked it um i took some liberty and i use some of your your voice samples and i took sean i didn't even tell sean i was just i was like yeah he'd probably be okay with it if i kind of cut up his his jam and stuff so that's what i did i just kind of cut and pasted his voice and the and the bass and and stuff and i think i think i hope you like it let's like say i hope you like it because it's it's for you it's a present for you for all the awesome things you do um for helping us out and um yeah just being awesome she playing our music and stuff and like yeah promoting 
promoting, you know, the little guys. That's why, like you say, it's promoting the little guys because um, Did you look at it or not? Been laughing my ass off for the past few hours. Oh. Yeah. No, yeah, I appreciate it. Um, anyway, it was good talking to all you guys. Thanks for hanging out. I'll see you guys on the, the flip side. All right, bye-bye.